Good morning, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. It's a beautiful July day. Getting toward the end of July. We just moved the uh, cattle into here. Casey and I did. We had them on a neighboring farm. and It's about uh, 8.30 in the morning. They're really going to town. But if you look at the cattle, they're not limited. If you look for the death triangle on the hip bone, all the cows are full. So we're just filling up more, okay? That's how you get fat cattle. They come in the paddock, they're full, and then they actually start eating again. Uh, this this farm's got a unique history to it. Um, it was idle since uh, the 70s. Uh, matter of fact, even before that, there hasn't been any livestock on this farm probably for around 60, 70 years. And uh, we got the lease on it three years ago and didn't have any fence. Didn't have but one pond on it. And uh, it was pretty rough shape. The cedar, the eastern red cedar had taken all of it. And so we came in and cut all the cedars and removed them. And you can see what we did with the logs right here. Uh, we've got probably, I don't know, 50 to 100 logs. Those are going to be milled on our sawmill. So we're going to get a lot of nice eastern red cedar. But we opened this up and we fed hay in here now for three, three winters in a row. We've unrolled hay in here. And look at the forage out here. I mean, it is unbelievably beautiful. The cattle are all packed around our mineral feeder over there because we, we held the mineral away from them for two days, well, about a day and a half because the rough terrain we were in, we just couldn't get the mineral feeder in there. But you can tell when you hold it away from them how they go after it. That is a, a 16 hole mineral, it's cafeteria style, and they can select exactly what they're missing from that mineral feeder. And they poop, the, they poop about 80% of their mineral back onto the paddock. So we call this herd our traveling laboratory. And we're going to get a little closer look at it. It's kind of hard to tell what they're doing right here, but if you get up here and look at them, it's got a, it's got a big rubber top on it. And uh, so when, they, when they lift up that flap, there's, six, there's eight, eight holes. Come on, there they go. There, there's eight holes in there. Come on, girl. And they can actually pick that up and select exactly which one they want. Yeah. How cool is that? Okay. So as they're on your farm and they're traveling around your farm, they're taking mineral out of here. They're pooping it back onto the land that is missing it. And so let's say they're going after the phosphorus over here. They're going to poop that phosphorus back out on the land where it's missing. And over time, they will remineralize your farm exactly what's missing. There is no laboratory in the world that can do that. So this is this is the way we've remineralized our farm. And you know. Um, I would say probably um, we're down around 70% in mineral consumption. We've been on this 11 years now. And uh, I just wanted to cover that a little bit. We do have a big chain on it. Okay. Got a log chain on it. So we can hook that on our foil. It's got steel runners on it. We actually added the steel runners because it comes with wood runners. It just keeps your runners safe so they don't drag off. The wood, wood just breaks down. But back to the farm. So what we did is we came in here, we, we did a civil pasture. All the way around this farm, we went in about 100 yards or so, some places maybe 60 yards, and we cut the trees out all the way around this farm. Now when we leased this, this only had about 16 acres of open ground on it. We opened up another 10 acres, so we got 26 acres of grazing now. And some people say, well, that's not very much land. Well, guess what? We're getting four paddocks out of it, 340 head. That's two days. Folks, it's hot out here. It's getting dry. The plants are starting to stall out. They're not going as fast. The cool seasons. But what's cool about this farm is it had a lot of warm season grasses in it. And uh, so we've got some big blue stem in here. There's a little bit of Indian grass. Uh, we hope to get some eastern gamma grass going in here by getting it to the cows. And it's got a lot of lespidies in it. If you walk over here and see what the cows are eating, this was broom sedge. This was broom sedge. Look at this. My gosh. Beautiful Korean lespidiza. We've got the red clover. Some of us actually got a black seed head on it. So the cows are going to plant that on the ground. We're going to have more clover next year. They're just getting a really good diet out there, folks. They're just getting what they need. And you can tell by looking at the cattle how slick they are. They're, they're, getting, they're getting everything they need. I mean, look at this little heifer right here. I mean, does she look like she's not getting everything she needs? It's 
just unbelievable. The cows are harvesting the energy off of this strip of grass. We've got a pond over the hill, fenced off. They can't get in it because the landowner likes to fish. I do too. Cattle don't belong in the pond. Keep them out of it with a poly wire. Let them drink under the wire. They can stand on bank and they reach underneath the head and drink. And uh, so we're going to be moving them again tonight, just constantly getting them moving, giving them fresh grass. That's why we don't worm, folks. The animals are always grazing up in the top part of the canopy. The parasites are down in the bottom part of the canopy. If you'll focus your grazing more on the tips, high performance, a lot longer solar collector left. It grows back quicker. No parasites. There's no manure, no, no urine to walk around in because they're always moving. And we're not using a back fence. We don't need to because the cows are always on the new paddy. They're not going to go back on what they've been fouled, stepped, pooped, peed, walked on. I think that's what I wanted to cover this morning. Everyone have a great weekend, and this is Greg Judy signing off.